In this video, we're going to be looking at binomial distribution. Now, I'm going to start off by showing you how binomial distribution comes about. However, it's not really that important to be able to do the questions on it, but it shouldn't take too long. So let's have a look. OK, so here we've got a probability tree diagram. Now, I'm going to assume that you know how to use your probability tree diagram. OK, so in this situation, we've got heads and tails. Now let's say we want to work out what's the probability of getting two heads. Now we'll start off by saying, let's work out the probability of getting one head. And we get 0 0.42. Of course, you don't need to do this working out. You could have just said it's 0 0.7 times 0 0.3. And of course, the other way gives the same answer. So you just times the answer by two. So here I've got 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, but times it by two because there's two ways of that happening. So here's the other way of doing it. We're simply doing 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, but there's two ways of that happening. So just times it by two, because both answers are the same, and that gives us 0 0.42. And this is the method we're gonna to use to do it. So now I'm tossing my coin three times, and I want to work out the probability of getting two heads. So if I go heads, heads, and then a tails, it's 0 0.7 squared times 0 0.3, which gives us 0 0.147. However, you must know there's many ways of getting two heads. We could have also done heads, tails, heads, or tails, heads, heads. So there's three ways, but they're all going to give that same answer. So you could simply just times this answer by three. Let's say we're tossing it five times. Now, I didn't put the numbers in because my diagram got really, really small. Okay, so let's work out the probability of getting two heads. So if I'm tossing it five times, two heads could be heads, followed by heads, followed by tails, followed by tails, followed by tails. That's 0 0.7 squared times 0 0.3 cubed. And we get 0 0.01323. But of course, you should know that's not the answer because there's many ways of getting two heads. Now, if you start trying to work out all the different ways, it will take you a really long time and you might even miss one out. But I'm going to tell you how many ways there is. There's 10 ways. So we simply times our answer by 10. Now, you're probably thinking, how did I know it was 10? And is there a way of working out? Yes, there is. So the way I got that 10 was I used the NCR button. And remember, N is how many times we're tossing it, which is five, and R is how many successes we want. Then notice we had the probability of success, which was a 0 0.7, and we had 0 0.7 squared. So that two, what did that two represent? The two represented how many successes you have. Then we multiplied by failures. And how many failures did we want? We wanted three failures. So that was to the power of three. And this is the general layout. And you can try this on your calculator and it should give the same result. So here we've got 10 tosses and we want the probability of getting three successes. Let's say the probability of heads is 0 0.7 just like the previous example. Now, I won't draw a tree diagram because if we're doing 10 tosses, it's going to be an extremely big tree diagram. But remember, we might have a pattern. So we're gonna to try to use that pattern to get the answer. So how did it go? So here we use the NCR button and the 10 is there for the number of tosses, that's the N. And the R is replaced with three, and that's how many successes you want. Okay, so what did we do? We times that number, which we're gonna get from our calculator, by the probability of success, which is 0 0.7, to the power of how many successes you want, which is three. Do you imagine you're going along your tree diagram, you are, you're going success, 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 and the rest are gonna be failures, because you want three successes and you're doing 10 goes times, of course, after you've done success, success, success on your tree diagram, you're going to go failure all the way till the end, which is going to be 0 0.3. And how many failures then, if you're going to have 10 goes, it's going to be seven failures. 
Now, very lucky for you, it's even easier than that. You don't even need to put all of this into calculator. You go to menu and you find distributions and you want to go to binomial PD because you want exactly three successes. And then it will ask you for what N is, and N is the number of tosses, which is 10. It, it will ask you for what P is, P is the probability of success, in this case 0 0.7. And it will ask you how many successes you want, which is X. And that's simply just three. And it gives you the answer. So you don't need to do this. And I'd advise you to use a calculator method, not write this out. So we need to know the notation for binomial distribution. Now what I've written here is simply what we have in this scenario. This reads as x is distributed binomially, 10 is the number of goes you have, and you have a comma followed by, and here you just put the probability of success, which is basically the scenario we have in this question. And what we've answered is probability of three successes. But in the exam, it might be written like this. So this is simply the question we just did, but just written in notation form. And you need to get used to that. In general, is x is distributed binomially, n is the number of goes you have, or the number of trials, comma, and p is the probability of success. Okay, so what is this telling us? It's telling us that x is distributed binomially with 20 trials and the probability of success is 0 0.1. And by 20 trials, it means, for example, if it's a coin, 20 tosses. And this is telling us to work out the probability of getting five successes in those 20 goes, with the probability of success being 0 0.1. Now, of course, you could do it like this. 20C5 times probability of success to the power of how many successes you want times probability of failure, of course, if success is 0 0.1, failure is 0 0.9, to the power of how many failures you want, which is 15. But you don't want to do it this way. You, well, you want to simply just put it into your calculator. So you just go to your distributions, binomial, PD. Whenever you want exactly a certain number of successes, for example, here we want exactly five successes, we choose binomial PD. And what you want to put into there is 20 for n, because that's the number of trials. And you want your p to be 0 0.1, your probability of success. And you want your x to be 5, because you want 5 successes. So the order of what you calculate to once differs between calculators. But simply just remember your n is the number of trials, in this case 20. And p is the probability of success, in this case 0 0.1. And x is how many successes you want, in this case 5. With the same distribution, I'll give you a chance to work out probability x equals 2. I'd like you to do this using the calculator method, because that's what you'll be doing in your exam. And you should have got 0 0.2852. Okay, this question is slightly different. It says probability x less than or equal to 3. Now you could just simply do probability x equals 3. Probability x equals 3 plus probability x equals 2 plus 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 probability x equals 1 plus probability x equals 0. But that would be really long to do in your calculator. If it was probability x equals 3, you simply would have done binomial PD in your calculator. So instead, you're going to do binomial CD, and that will work all of that out for you in one go. So in the calculator, when it gives you the option about CD or PD, when it says x less than or equal to 3, you're going to choose binomial CD. And again, it's going to ask you for the n value, the p value, and the x value. So n will be 20, p will be 0 0.1, and x is going to be 3. And you should have got 0 0.867. So here we've got a new scenario. It states that x is distributed binomially with 15 trials, and the probability of success being 0 0.3. Okay, so I've got a few questions here. Um, you can, If you feel like you've already got the hang of it, you can pause the video and have a go at these questions. Okay, so the first one is a binomial PD because you want exactly four successes. So on your calculator, simply choose binomial PD. 
and then you're just putting in the values. N is 15, P is 0 0.3, and X as 4. And you should have got 0 0.5155. Now, remember what I showed you at the start of this video. All of that was a background into binomial distribution. Technically, you probably realize you don't need to know all of that. You can still do all of the questions like I mentioned before. Okay, so in the next question, you should realize it's binomial CD because you want less than or equal to 5. So you're going to simply put the same numbers in as N and P, but you put X in as 5 this time under the binomial CD. Now, the next one is a little bit tricky because it says probably X is more than or equal to 8. Now, this one is a cumulative question, so it's a binomial CD question. However, it says more than or equal to 8 but your calculator only works out less than or equal to. So if you put x in as 8, it'll actually work out product x less than or equal to 8, but it's not the same as product x more than or equal to 8. So what do we do here? What does product x more than or equal to 8 mean? It means you want 8 successes, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Those are the numbers you want. So let's think about the numbers we don't want. We don't want 7 and below. We only want 8 and above. So poly x less than 7 is everything we don't want. Now if you do 1 minus that, that will give you everything you want because all probabilities add up to 1. So if we work out 1 minus poly x less than equal to 7, we've actually worked out poly x more than equal to 8. Now the last one is the most trickiest one. It's saying between 3 and 10, including both 3 and 10. Now, if I simply wrote it as product x less than equal to 10, you should say that would be incorrect. And why is it incorrect? Because less than equal to 10 goes from 10 all the way to 0. But I want 10 all the way through to 3. But I want 10 all the way through to 3, including 3. So I've included 2, 1, and 0, which I don't want. So I can simply subtract product x less than equal to 2, and that should give me exactly what the question has asked me for. And you should have got 0 0.8725. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.